Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, today I'm working on a fabrication project and I'll be the first one to tell you that uh, I do more machine shop work, I do uh, woodworking. When it comes to welding, uh, I'm proficient at it. I'm by no means an expert, uh, but I have done a fair amount of it and that's what today's job is gonna be, is fabricating. We're gonna be making a custom stand to hold a very heavy precision surface plate, which is a piece of granite that's about a, a foot thick, six feet long, about three feet wide, and it is, the top has been ground and lapped perfectly flat to within uh, really probably 50 millionths of an inch, a very precision measuring surface that we will be using in the machine shop. When I bought the, uh, the surface plate, it came on a metal stand, but the metal stand, I didn't like it for several reasons. And uh, number one, I, I, it was not one that I could get a pallet jack under and move around the shop. It just was kind of thrown together. It wasn't, there were just several little things about it that I didn't like. So we're gonna be making a new stand or actually using some pieces off the old one, but mostly fabricating a new one here. And to start with, we're gonna be making the top of this. Now the top of this, I'm gonna be using this uh, square tubing. This is a 3 16 inch square tubing two inches by three inch uh, square tube, and we'll, we'll be basically making a rectangle. I've already got uh, the corners cut and mitered at 45 degrees, and uh, we'll be laying it with the, the, the wide surface, the three inch wide surface on the top, two inches high. This will become the platform, uh, that, or the frame that basically holds up the surface plate. There'll be legs coming off the bottom of this. So let's get over here. We're gonna get these pieces laid out square, get them tacked together, and then welded together. So first thing I want to do before we start anything else is I want to go ahead and prep these corners for welding. And uh, we're just going to come in here with an angle grinder and just put a little bit of a bevel in there, a little bit of a 45. That just gives a little bit better surface area, a little bit better penetration uh, for your weld. So you're not just welding across the top. You can actually get down into the meat. And uh, we're not going to take a whole lot off, but we'll put a little bit of a V in there. I've got good preparation done now in my corners. Uh, have a nice V out there for my weld to go in. Next thing I wanna do is get the part all laid out. This needs to be set up where it's square. And to do this, I'm gonna be using these tools made by Fireball Tool Company. This is a fairly new acquisition for me. I recently just purchased these. Uh, very high quality product made here in the US. You can get these in either cast iron or aluminum. Uh, the ones I have are cast iron. And this is called the uh, Mega Square and Monster Square. Uh, the Monster Square, of course, is just kind of a 90 degree, has a 45 on the back. This one here, you can really kind of get it into inside and outside corners and a couple other ways that you can use it. And it comes in the regular size as well as the mini size down here. And I've got a complete set of four, and we're going to use all four of them here. So I'm going to go over here and get these in place. We'll go ahead and start clamping it up, get some measurements, make sure everything's square, and start welding. Let's, uh, let's lay her out. So we'll start by putting these... Uh, Squares here in the corners, like such. I'll put my other squares on the other side. Really doesn't matter which one goes where. We're just trying to get four square corners here and get them in place. Now these have cutouts in here specifically to get clamps and so forth in. I'm just gonna use some of these vice grips. I'm gonna start by clamping to the bottom one here. This one is in nice and square on the sides. So we'll go ahead and uh, clamp that one in place as well. Okay, come down here, same thing. Thing looks good there. I'm gonna use these uh, clamps here on the other side, just because I don't have enough vice grips to go around. But uh, we'll get this one clamped in here. Okay, 
So they got one more vice grip. We'll use it right here. See, that's not, it's not up flush up against the side here. All right, that's better. So, sitting here looking, I got good tight corners in here. My 45s aren't perfect. There's opens up a little bit on the end, but that'll be easy to fill in with the welder. No problem there. Everything looks good. I do want to now just check and make sure everything's square. So I'm going to measure diagonals across here. If I can get around my clamps. I may have to reposition some of these clamps just a little bit. Right, let's try this measuring the diagonals again. So we'll come in here and I am on 73 and 7 eighths in this direction. Let's measure the opposite direction across the diagonals. This is a good way to always check your squareness. That one there, the clamp is just still a little bit in the way, but I think we can work around it here. And we are about 73 and 7 eighths. It might be a sixteenth of an inch under, but I, this is going to be more than close enough. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and tack it in place. I'm, I'm happy with that. So we're ready to start tacking this together and welding it. And I'm going to be welding this together with a MIG gun. This is a MIG welder. It's actually not one that I own. I don't own a MIG welder currently. I do have a TIG welding outfit. Uh, got a MIG welder on my list of things to get for the shop. So I borrowed one from a friend actually, but uh, we are going to be MIGging this together. I've got uh, the machine set up basically according to the thickness of the metal that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be welding. Uh, I did make some practice welds earlier off camera just to make sure my settings were right and I think we're good to go. Uh, so with that, I got on uh, my PPE, uh, we got on gloves, we got on a uh, jacket here to protect myself from uh, infrared light and sparks and so forth. Got my welding hood, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll start by just tacking the four corners. Uh, probably go back and tack them again on the inside and outside, uh, then flip it over, tack it again, and then we'll weld her weld her up real good so let's get in here and get it done all right we got our Insides, we're going to go ahead and do the outsides now, just tacking them again. All right, so with that, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and flip the whole part over. Uh, we'll recheck it to make sure it's square in both directions. I uh, probably won't put the, the, the squares in this time and uh, we'll get it tacked on the other side and then start welding. So I'll be right back. So I've got the part flipped over and I want to recheck my diagonals now just to make sure we're square. Uh, and if need be, I can kind of tweak this thing a little bit now uh, to get it perfectly square. Also now without those clamps in my ways, I'm going to be able to get a much more accurate measurement. I was kind of having to estimate a little bit last time. That is measuring 73 and 7 eighths. And 73 and 7 eighths. This one here, if anything, it might be maybe a 64th of an inch under. But I mean, this thing is so close. We're going to just go with it like it is. So let me, uh, let me get in here and we'll get this side tacked together. Same as before, we're just going to tack them in the inside and outside corners and uh, then I'll go around and start uh, actually welding everything together real good.
All right, let's put a let's put a weld on here. All right, we got them welded up all the way around, um, and I'm satisfied with my welds. They're not absolutely beautiful, but they're going to be more than adequate. Um, had a little bit of trouble welding uphill over here. That's not my area. The flat parts was pretty good, but uh, I had a little bit of droopiness there. But hey, that's why they make a grinder, right? Speaking of which, uh, we're going to get the grinder out now and kind of clean this stuff up. And uh, but all in all, I feel comfortable that it's not going anywhere. So we're 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 doing good. So after some grinding and a little bit of massaging with the flap wheels, uh, looks like we got a nice little finish there. Turned out good. I got a nice weld all the way around. I'm real happy with it. One thing I will comment is I purposely kind of left a little corner. I did weld the inside on these uh, and I didn't do any grinding or anything like that on the insides. Those look fine like they are, but I did make sure that I kind of left these little corners in here where they weren't welded. And uh, the purpose there is, is that actually is going to allow a little bit of air to equalize and get inside this. This is a piece of tubing and if I had it completely sealed up, uh, you could get some moisture trapped in there or what have you. Uh, it just lets it breathe a little bit. So we do have some, a couple of places in there where it can breathe, uh, but I'm happy with this and uh, ready to move on. So we have our platform. Again, this is where the surface plate is going to sit on. Now I, I am going to come in here a little bit, or later in the project rather, and we'll build some extensions in here. There's three points of contact and that's going to actually sit in here. Uh, but the next step is I want to get the legs on this, four legs coming off of it, do some bracing, cross bracing in that. Uh, and that's going to be in, in my next video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call this uh, quits for the day. I'm going to let this all cool down. Uh, I need to cut a few more pieces of metal before we weld the legs on. And we'll get out here in the shop and get that this uh, project hopefully knocked out here pretty quick. So nice surface plate table, new custom table, uh, well on the way now. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.